So I just want to give you a quick overview of how to kind of navigate Canvas and where to find a lot of the assignments and things like that. So starting from our home page, our home page is actually the module section, which you'll find here. And the module section, uh, I try to break it up into um, basic topics, basic issues or whatever, like for example, Lecture videos you'll see right away. We haven't, we don't have any lecture videos yet, uh, but when we start getting those lecture videos and I start producing those, uh, those will be saved and provided under that heading. Uh, study tips and study guides. This is for you, and I uh, give this to all my students every semester. Um, there's some great websites, there's some great places to look um, on how to get ready for the semester, how to keep up with your classes. I think a lot of the success for this class and I think in college in general is learning to keep organized and keep it on task. And I think that's the first thing you should look at. Uh, the syllabus, there's a copy there. And uh, there's a description. So if you're not sure what the textbook looks like, uh, there's a link there. And there's our first reading, the PDF I had mentioned in the previous video, where you can find that uh, so that we can start uh, getting the ball rolling. You can start uh, taking a look at that. So getting that ready for your first summary analysis. And then uh, the group assignment that I mentioned about PowerPoint, the templates here. So remember I said everybody's going to submit a report at the end, uh, right before their particular group uh, turns in their PowerPoint. And what it's going to look like here, you're going to identify which group you belong to, the date, excuse me, your name, the subject, uh, due date, and the activities completed, the task, and the group member's name who was responsible for that task, and when that was due. So if you had, uh, let's say, five days to work on it or something, who was responsible and what day should they have given that to the person to put it all together. If you had any issues, uh, team comments, contributions, who contributed, who did not, those everybody's going to turn in their own report. So um, please let me know. And this is uh, part of the grade. Now let's go back. Now. That's where you're going to submit the report. And here are the due dates and instructions. So instructions here, um, what you should have in that PowerPoint presentation, uh, clear examples, an explanation of the general topic, uh, questions that you came up with your group on answering, so while you were reading, you were trying to figure out something, make sure you put that into your PowerPoint so other people can learn from that as well. Uh, because I'll be sharing, after you submit it, I'll be sharing it with the class. And so that's why each group has a chapter to submit so that we all can learn from each other. Um, define important vocabulary terms. So especially words that you're not familiar with. Um, Things that are very philosophical, metaphysics, epistemology, these big words. Make sure you define them in your PowerPoint so your reader knows and other people can use it in class to help them study. And I think the best part is create original examples. Provide examples of what's going on in the book um, that you can relate to that makes it easier for everybody else to understand. So I'll be grading it look, looking at these Four, L, uh, excuse me, five, uh, four, no, four elements, yeah. Formatting, grammar, organization, and use of examples. Um, formatting, did you meet all the requirements that I, that I put up there? Uh, grammar, make sure you proofread. This is for everybody else as well. Uh, not just an assignment, but for both reasons, make sure you are proofreading. Organization, how well is it organized? Is it easy to follow? And uh, examples, like I said, did you use clear examples to help explain to your reader uh, 
what the book was talking about, what it meant. And then the schedule, if you uh, scroll down, you'll see that the first group is going to present, uh, or excuse me, not present, but submit their PowerPoint. Uh, it'll be due on March 26th before 5 p.m. And it's going to be over our second reading, You're Not the Anima Had in Mind by Thomas King. And that's on page 52. And then group two, you're going to see they're going to, their project is going to be due, their PowerPoint, on April 2nd before 5 p.m. And so it'll go on like that, and you can see the rest of the schedule. Now, you may ask, well, wait a minute, which group I, do I belong to? Really easy to find. Just go to here to people. And then everybody's there in the class, but go to groups tab right here. And each group, you'll see the members of that group and who should we be working with. So get in contact uh, this week with your group, making sure everybody's on the same page, that you're organizing and getting ready to submit your PowerPoint when it's due. So coming back to the modules, that's the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, there's also a very good, um, I guess, uh, format that you can learn on how to estimate how many study hours. So I think it's a little bit difficult since we're all teaching online, like while well, I'm teaching online and you're taking classes online, that um, it's not the typical, I guess, course where you show up, um, you know what to do in class and stuff. Here you're gonna have to try to pace yourself. It's a little harder in that sense. So making sure that outside of since we're not in, in person, making sure that you organize your day and you're having your study time, you're having your lecture time. So that's the tough part, I think, about online uh, instruction and learning is that it's up to you to kind of keep track of everything. Um, you can't rely anymore on schedules and anything. You have to make your own schedule. How to, rely, how to write a philosophy paper, we're going to talk about that towards the end of the semester. I uh, have a guide for that. Um, the summary analysis, there's the directions for the first summary analysis. Also, I provide you an example too. So, you know, a lot of students have, well, what is this supposed to look like? How am I supposed to answer? Um, had a great example from a student back in 2017, and uh, I've been using their paper with their permission as an example of what a good summary analysis would look like. So take their uh, kind of example. Of course, it's about a different paper and something completely different that we're not talking about, but um, how they formatted it, how they explain things. Um, take a look and see what I'm expecting. And then when you're ready, you can click there and you can submit uh, in a Word document that your summary analysis when you're ready. Uh, same thing with the applied responses. Uh, they haven't been uh, issued yet. We're not there yet, but as soon as, like I mentioned in the syllabus, when they're released, you'll find them there as well as the final paper. Now, announcements. I already posted an announcement up, but future announcements for some reason, there's a delay or something's going on. Uh, keep track. Always come to announcements. If I port, uh, if I need to notify you guys of something really important, I'm going to post it up on announcements. So make sure you keep up with that. Your assignments are here. Um, you'll see what's due. Making sure you keep up with everything. Uh, your grades as well. Um, discussions. You're also welcome. Uh, to introduce yourself, give us a little background of yourself. Uh, since everything's virtual, it's kind of tough to connect with people sometimes, so I open that place up for you guys to do that. Uh, what else? Uh, there is a copy of the syllabus here, and important dates, you can look there. And chat, chat is where you'll find me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, 
There's only one here, of course, right now, but uh, all you have to do is uh, type a message in. I'll be in the room and just let me know if you have any questions or any concerns. I'll try to answer them during those office hours. Welcome. My name is Joseph Bernal, and I'll be your instructor this semester. And what we're going to be talking about is an overview of philosophy. Now, a lot of people are unfamiliar with the discipline of philosophy, uh, but hopefully I can introduce you to some of the basics of uh, the different fields and what we as philosophers talk about. So it's a short course. It's a mini master. That means what we're going to try to do is cover a lot of ground in a short, a short amount of time. Um, so you have to be on it. Uh, this is the type of course where you're going to have to keep up. Um, make sure you don't fall behind. If uh, you have any questions or any concerns, please let me know as soon as possible. And don't let yourself fall behind. Now, let's take a look at the syllabus. If you can see, um, my email address is right there. JBRNA36 at nmsu.edu. Now, when you email me, please let me know that you're emailing me from this class. Uh, that in, what that means is that include the number. So the number for this course is 2230GD02. Include that in your email so because I'm teaching other courses, so I know which class uh, you're coming from, and I can find better files, your grades, whatever, quickly. Now, please keep in mind that um, it's going to take me a while. I have other courses to and students to answer to and things like that. So give me about 48 hours to get back to you. Um, and, you know, especially with COVID right now and um, establishing clear boundaries in our online communication, uh, I just want to let you know that I probably won't be answering your emails if you email after 5 p.m. That's usually when I shut everything down uh, and I take care of my own personal chores or whatever like that. So just keep that in mind. Now, I will be having office hours throughout the semester. Uh, those will be Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 2. Uh, and you can find that on the Canvas course under a tab called Course Chat. And in a minute, I'll show you where to find that. Now, let's go further down the syllabus. Uh, some of the basics um, you, you can read kind of on your own, but uh, when we're looking at different types of philosophy, like I mentioned, uh, how do philosophers think, how is that going to be related to things like science, free will, the mind, there's all these interesting topics that we'll talk about. And the rationale is that I want to give you a clear understanding about, you know, the scope of what philosophers deal with, and I also want to help you identify and develop your own critical thinking skills and kind of try to get you to think outside the box. So now the book that we're going to be using is called Echoes from the Cave by Lisa Gannett. Um, you can find it at the bookstore or you are welcome to look for it online. Um, if you find either a hard copy or a digital copy, that's fine. Uh, but please make sure you have the book as soon as possible. I've included uh, the first reading on Canvas for you, um, but due to copyright laws and things like that, I can only offer you one uh, chapter of reading. I can't give you the entire book or anything like that. So please purchase the book right away because we'll be talking about um, some of the readings this week and next week. Now, there's a number of objectives. There's uh, all these rules and everything like that. But I really want to get to um, what you'll be looking at this semester in with regards to an online class. Now, a lot of us might be new to online classes. Uh, we're still learning about that. We're still getting the custom and being comfortable with that. So make sure that you're ready for this class. And I put a list up here on the syllabus for you to kind of check and see, you know, um, are you ready for to take on an online class. Big thing I want to mention, don't try to, and it's, I know it's tempting, don't try to um, 
do this class using a smartphone or something like that. Um, I'm actually programming on the side. I'm doing my own degree in programming. And uh, right now I'm learning the big difference between putting a program on an app and using a desktop program on a regular computer or a laptop. So it's a big change. There's a lot of things that have to go there. So just because it works um, on your laptop doesn't mean it's going to work necessarily just as well on your uh, smartphone. So uh, turning assignments, readings, things like that, uh, try to do it on a laptop or a desktop. If you just want to keep in touch or send me an email or something like that, or you know, just look at an announcement, the sh your smartphone is fine with that. I'm, it should work. But don't try to do any uh, heavy assignments on and off your phone. Now, make sure you do have um, Adobe Reader uh, so you can read PDFs. I'll posted a number of PDFs on there, so uh, like the first reading. So make sure you have you can download a free version of uh, Adobe Reader online. Just make sure you have that installed and that you can read those type of files. If you're not sure how to do that, let me know, and I'm more than pleased to help. Um, some basic Medicaid uh, rules. Uh, when we talk online, um, we'll be discussing all sorts of uh, deep and serious issues, but try to keep it civil. Um, don't try to think, take things too personally. Um, philosophers, and I get in trouble with this a lot sometimes with my friends and family. Philosophers, we love to explore ideas, we love to talk about different things. Um, and sometimes uh, we kind of distance ourselves from some of the conversations, so we try not to take things personally. But I know that's not usually how human beings, how we interact. So try to kind of keep that in mind, uh, especially for this class. Think critically, kind of step back, look at the issue and the, the thing that we're talking about, and not so much about uh, if this personally um, is something that you're trying to overcome with. But I also want to mention on the other side that it is important. This is a philosophy class, and it is always relevant to your life. So, you know, it can be personal, but Try to keep it civil and uh, let's try to get along and reason things out rather than uh, yell or criticize each other. Now, what are the assignments for this semester? Well, there's going to be a number of different assignments. Um, the first is going to be a group project. And I know people are not too, not too many people are big fans of group projects, but um, I know I've had my trouble with group projects as a student as well, or even professionally, you know, it's always difficult to work with other people, but it's still important, even though it's tough, it's still important to learn to work with other people. And what this group project will be, and it's relatively simple, is um, you're going to be assigned with your group members to give me a summary in the form of a PowerPoint of that reading or chapter. So I've already designated uh, what chapters um, each group is going to be assigned and who's going to be in each group. That's always that's already set in Canvas, and I'm uh, welcome to show you in a bit when we switch over to Canvas where you can find that. So that's going to be worth 10% of your grade. Now, another 10% of your grade is going to be a report, and I already have a template uh, that you'll download, and I'll show you where you can find that. And that's where you're going to, um, when your group submits, and you only need one person to submit the PowerPoint. But every individual in the group is going to submit a report. So what you're going to do in that report is you're going to—it's really detailing, you know, how you work together, who was uh, responsible for what task or what part of the presentation, things like that. Uh, I know again, it's difficult to work with groups sometimes, and sometimes, you know, uh, people feel like they're doing most of the work and their peers are not helping them. So the report is kind of to keep everybody responsible and keep everybody on track. And you're going to be submitting that along with the PowerPoint. Now, a big chunk of the grade, 20% of the grade, is going to be broken down between what I'm going to call summary and analysis. And I have a template again for that. And what you're going to do is that designated on a particular week, let's say, for example, week one, 
your uh, the assignment is going to be open at 7 a.m. on March 19th, and you'll have until March 19th to March 26th before 11 p.m. to submit it. So during that time, you should be working on it, and um, it's going to be over a particular reading. So you're going to give me a quick summary and analysis of that reading. I want to see if you understand what you've read, uh, and not just understand it, but also Take it a step further. This is the analysis part. You know, what do you think about that? How does that actually work? Uh, do you change your mind about your preconceptions of what you believe or not based on what you read? So I'll break it down in detail what that's going to look like, but you're going to have uh, four assignments of those uh, throughout the semester. You'll see week one, week three, week five, and week seven um, are going to consist of providing a summary analysis. Now, now this is the next uh, big chunk of your grade, and this is 40%. Uh, these are what I call applied responses. Now, what is an applied response? Now, this is kind of we're taking the summary analysis idea to the next step. I, what I really want to get you guys to think about it and, and we'll go through it in detail once we get closer I think to the uh, the first applied response but really think about what are the competing ideas here so philosophers we are well known to disagree with each other we debate about all sorts of things you'll find out and sometimes some arguments are better than others so I really want you to think about that in this section we're going to look at competing uh, philosophies, comp competing theories, competing ways of looking at things. And I want to see well, what side has the best argument, do you think? Where ha who has to give more convincing reasons for their particular stand on an issue? And those are what the applied responses will be about. So they're going to take a little bit more uh, critical analysis than just summarizing what's going on. We really want you to kind of uh, explore and kind of weigh out uh, the issues that we're going to talk about. And the first one is going to be open on March 22nd, and it'll close on March 29th. So if you notice, uh, with the assignments, it's going to go back and forth. Um, you'll always have an assignment going on throughout the semester. Um, once you're done with one, usually you have another one. Um, to work on so you're always going to be this is what i'm saying about uh having a short semester uh you're always going to be busy there's always going to be something to do uh so get in the habit of uh making sure you know what you should be doing that week and i have already set the dates you can see for all the assignments so i strongly suggest you know if you have a smartphone put it in your calendar if you're old school and you like pencil and paper, write it down. Don't forget the dates so you know you can keep on track and you won't fall behind. And then finally, there's going to be a final paper, and that's going to be worth uh, the last 20%. Now, the final paper is going to be something that you're going to work on for week. I'll give you some time. I'll, I'll explain what you're going to have to do. But it's kind of uh, a heads up. You want to pay attention throughout the class. Don't think because we only covered it in week one. Oh, you can forget about it in the last week. We won't talk about it. Uh, the final paper is kind of be is going to kind of be like um, a whole culmination of what you've learned, kind of comprehensive of you know what did you take away from the semester um, from all the stuff that we talked about. So don't forget some of the stuff that we're just covering. Uh, just because it's going to be towards the end of the semester. Now, the grading scale, typical grading scale, you can see here, you can look in detail. Um, I think what most people are interested in right now is also, well, do I accept the late work? Well, since I've set the time and you know the time from day one on the syllabus, when things are due, when you're responsible for things. I usually don't accept late work because there's plenty of time to make a 
accommodations, you know, if you have to go to work or something like that, you know, now's the time to start um, making those accommodations, you know, requests in time of whatever you have to do. But I'm also reasonable. So if there's a medical emergency, you know, unfortunately you get sick, car accident, that's totally understandable. But please uh, talk to me as soon as possible so we can work something out. Uh, again, because it's a short semester, you know, grades come by quickly. Things are due uh, relatively quickly. So um, don't just kind of disappear on me too long and then try to come back and try to catch up. Um, please let me know what's going on as much as you can within reason, of course. If you're in a car accident and you can't move, well, that's understandable, but just make sure you don't fall behind. Same thing with makeup assignments and stuff like that. Um, unless you can give me some good reasons, you know, I'm a philosopher, so I expect some good reasons. Uh, try to keep on a uh, task. Participation. Um, I want you guys to keep up with the readings. That's the biggest thing. Um, Make sure you're prepared. And I used to say um, to my students, make sure you're reading everything. Uh, but I think a better way to say this, maybe analyzing. That's what I'm really looking for. For philosophers, we're going to play that part this semester. So I want you to really think about, you know, from a philosophy, like a philosophical perspective, from a philosopher, you know, what does it really mean? What is what is the What are they trying to say in this paper? Don't just try to read it like something from from social media. Really think about it. So come prepared, notes, things like that. That's what I'm looking for. And contacting me. They said, um, give me 48 hours at least. Uh, and before 5 p.m. if you expect, you know, an answer soon. Um, and make sure you contact me uh, through the official uh, college email system. That way I can keep track better. Uh, I've had students contact me through their personal emails, but they forget to put their name, they forget to put what class they're in, I have no, no, no idea who they are. So it makes it a lot easier and things are gonna go much more smoothly if you use the college system. Now, looking at the um, sort of schedule, You'll see that uh, this week, which is the first week, you're going to be looking at the cave allegory by Plato. We're going to start there. Uh, it's page eight in your textbook. And I, again, I also provided a PDF copy of it because I know it might have took some time for people to order their books, for shipping and all that to come in. So I gave you guys a little bit of leeway on that first reading. Um, and that's what your first summary analysis is going to be about. You're going to uh, summarize and then analyze uh, Plato's Allegory of the Cave, which is going to be really important. And I'll follow that lecture two online. I'll provide a video where I go over some of the major points of that reading. And then next week, we're going to be looking at another reading uh, from the book, which is going to be on page 52. And that those two readings, the Pla uh, Plato's Cave Allegory and Thomas King's uh, You're Not the Indian I Had in Mind paper, those are going to be uh, the subject for our first applied response. So that's why you need to keep up with the readings um, because they're all going to be part of all the assignments. So, And you'll see we're going to talk about different things and I'll go into detail more in the lecture. But we're going to cover some major fields, metaphysics, which I'll explain, um, epistemology, uh, political philosophy, which is very important right now, I think, aesthetics, which talks about beauty, art, uh, of that nature. And then you see at the end, um, the final exam is going to be on due on May 14th. And I'll explain a week beforehand what you'll have to do. And it's going to be due at 3 p.m. So make sure uh, you get it in at that time. Uh, also, I put up some important dates here. Um, last day 
at courses without an instructor signature is March 22nd. Let's hit that courses uh, with an instructor signature, March 25th. Last day to drop a course and get a refund is March 31st. Uh, last day to withdraw from a single course uh, with a withdrawal of W is April 21st. Last day to withdraw from the university completely is May 7th. Um, and then final grades, everybody's going to ask me, when do I get my grades? Uh, everybody gets their grades back the same day. And it's going to be May 19th. So if you have any issues dropping from the class or anything that, and that let's say you're on financial aid and that may affect your financial aid, please consult with the, uh, your academic advisor, the financial aid office. Um, I can't give you too many details. I'm not a financial aid expert and I don't want to step in and pretend I am. So make sure you contact them uh, before you think about uh, dropping the course and if you're on financial aid. Uh, if you feel you're struggling with the course, please come to me first in regards to, you know, how can I help? Um, this course is always tough for everybody because a lot of people haven't taken philosophy before. It's like taking the math class for the first time. So um, we're willing to work with you, help you out, and hopefully you have a great semester. And I'll see you right now in our first lecture.